This time on Pedal Box, we head back to LA and Irwindale Speedway, where there's a little bit of this, a little bit of this, and a whole lot of this. light on content last month and a lot of that was to do with me being away for a week, visiting a couple of friends in LA and visiting Irwindale Speedway and their regular Thursday night session. We were pretty cruel to you guys last time we went to the States. We shipped back maybe 15 seconds of racing footage with us, which just isn't enough. We really promise bad. we've got a lot more this time. But before we get into that, we're going to take a look at this MX-5 built by a guy called Carl on YouTube and Instagram, and I'll let him tell you about it. My name's Carr, and I built a Hellcat Miata. This is a 6.2 liter, supercharged, um, straight from a 2017 Hellcat Challenger, and we kept the six-speed manual transmission. We built our own, uh, our own custom mounts and uh, custom transmission crossmember for the TR6060 six-speed transmission, and we got uh, full A-arms upper and lower on the car, which we got from V8 Roadsters and we're running a Ford 8.8 .8 differential. And uh, that's been really good to us. It's one of the better things that Ford built, the 8.8 .8 and the 9.8. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, it's a burnout machine. It's really fast. You know, you're kind of catching the car after you know we did our burnout stuff here today, so the car's in kind of bad condition. So I think a lot of people are gonna be a little pissed because you know, this paint job is like maybe three weeks old. And um, this car started out as you know completely stock Miata. Uh, we wanted to do a Hellcat motor in something. We just weren't sure what we wanted to do the Hellcat motor in. So we got to thinking. I was like, you know, the Cobras and stuff are really cool. You know, the old Shelby Cobras. And so we we're like, well, we'll do a modern day one with a Miata. And so many people do LS swaps, and this was a way to do something different and still have you know a really good power to weight ratio with the car. Now, I don't know how true this is for our US viewers, the few of you that there are, but here in the UK, there's not a lot of ways that we can practice drifting safely, and especially not legally and cheaply, so the burnout box at places like Irwindale is an absolute godsend. They set this up in the middle of the car park, and it's just built of a lot of K rails in a massive square with an entrance at one end, and you can come down and do what you want. This guy's been doing it for about three or four months now, and he's getting really, really good, and he keeps driving his car until it literally pops. Thankfully though it wasn't anything major, we just popped a hose, so trimmed it down, threw it back on, job was good. One of the great things here is they don't really care what you bring down, it doesn't have to be a muscle car, it doesn't have to be domestic or anything, it can be a Sylvia, one of these import cars, it can be a pickup truck, it can be a brand new BMW M3, it can be absolutely anything. And there's no expectations of skill, you just have to not crash, but you can come down here and practice rather than doing it on the main road and just get better in a controlled environment, and everybody has a good time. Obviously the drag strip's open as well. If you're welcome to just come down, queue up, and face off down the strip. There's all sorts of machinery here, like this pair of demons that faced off. And there's some older stuff too, like this really nice Chevy Gasser. Humble Poo is uh, a 1963 Chevy 2 Nova with a 496 871 blower and a Hillborn injection on it. And uh, runs very well. But I also take it to the car shows and drive it on the street. So, street legal. But yet I still can run it here at the racetrack and enjoy it, and have a good time.
The best time is 640. That's all the faster I can go because I'm not licensed to run any quicker than that. So uh, 640 is what I run and that's where I have to stay. A lot of fun, a lot of excitement. I've had the car since Big Willie's track out in uh, Wilmington and uh, have enjoyed it ever since. While we're there, we caught up with Bob, who's the Irwindale Speedway announcer and has been for quite a while. My name's Bob Beck. I've been in Irwindale for nine years, as a matter of fact, this Thursday night. Well, we've gone through three different owners. I've outlasted all the owners, and uh, we have a whole new surface. We have new grandstands. We've got a concession stand. We've got, it's just more spectator and racer friendly over the years. And we've got classes now. We've got the big board that we keep records now. For people to see how you know I used to write it down on a piece of paper and try and keep track of who did that who did what well now we've got a big board for everyone that gets bragging rights and everyone can see it with the, the quickest times right now our, our quickest ET is a, a 444 and that guy's name is plastered on this board for everyone to see and now he's got the target on his back and that's what people are doing we were talking I was a road racer and uh, I wanted to get my times for lap times and I went up to timing and scoring and the guy that was doing it said oh I gotta go run my car here and he gave me the microphone, and I can't just sit there and talk and read off times like he was doing. So I spoke about the cars, the drivers, what they were going to do. Watch from from six cylinders all the way up to 396 big blocks. What the car was going to look like going through a corner and things of that nature. And a guy walked out of the crowd and said, how'd you like to get paid? And that's how I got started getting paid to do announcing. 127. This one gets in. He gets the power down to the payment. He's in the grove. Fastest I've seen here was a jet dragster running 386. And they were able to stop. Now people say, well, there's not enough room to stop. Oh, yeah, we've had jet cars running three second ETs and they are able to stop. The fastest piston powered car, mid four seconds. And he popped two parachutes to stop. But, uh, you know, it can be done. And we see it all the time. It, on an average night, like last week, for example, the top eight cars were all five-second cars. So it, it's the traction is definitely there. The track surface is definitely able to hold the power. Right up until the track closed at 10 o'clock, there were still guys lined up 20 deep trying to race. I couldn't believe the size of the crowd. Santa Pod does big events and they're that busy, but this is just a regular thing on Thursdays. Yeah, it's incredible to think that this has such a good turnout and it has such a good community behind it. And while it may only be an eighth mile track, it does get a lot of use, especially the guys like Hoonigan who have a burnout box of their own and Roadkill film some of their stuff there as well. And while I was out there, my friend Van also told me about this really cool car show that was going on. And there's a lot of people out there who set up foundations in order to help people with cancer. And this car show is like a big collection of all of those groups in that area coming together to do one big awareness drive. And it's really, really cool. There's all sorts of things here. Walking around, we were hoping to try and talk to more people, but on that day, it was 105 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 40 Celsius, and it was just too hot to stand around in the sun anywhere. So it was a really good show, and they had a fantastic turnout, but hopefully we'll try and get back to another one next time we're out there, and maybe see people when it's not quite so hot. And it wouldn't be a trip to America without bringing back more bits for the Thunderbird. So while I was out there in January, I ordered these to the hotel and they didn't actually arrive. So I had to get my friend Van, thanks Van, to pop round to the hotel, pick them up and hold them for the last six months. So here we've got a front section of quarter panel on the rear to go behind the door. That'll fix all of the rust down there. And a rear quarter panel to go right at the back. So you'll no longer be able to see all the way through my quarter panels. So we'll get these welded on in an episode coming up and then we'll show you hopefully getting painted. Well that pretty much wraps up another one of our trips to the States. 
Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to the channel. It would really help us out and we'll see you next time.